Xander Shoffley. Man, golf is hard. Shoot a seven under 64, the second best round of the day, and lose ground to the guy that you're playing with. That's what happened to Xander Shoffley. We'll get to that other guy. But Xander goes out in 32. His big stretch was a birdie on 14, an eagle on 15, and another birdie on 16. This should have been the type of round, Greg, that vaults you into the lead and you never look back as a top 10 player in the world. That's it's not going to happen. He's still in the mix, but he's too off the pace. Very much in the mix. Um, but, you know, uh, this was a really cool moment during this round, the birdie eagle birdie moment. Because, um, one, you have the green mile ahead of you. I know 16 is part of the green mile, but the green miles ahead of you, you got to take advantage of those holes anyway. Uh, and, and he does. But you're also in an absolute shootout on a golf course where it it hasn't really been windy at all all week, and it's played very difficult. And Xander said a couple days ago, I think it was after his opening round, that you know he had to hit a lot of really good shots to 30 feet because uh, that's what you're shooting for. And, and all of a sudden, this just completely flips and completely turns into a shootout. And Xander doesn't really know that until Wyndham Clark, who he's playing with, starts doing what he's doing. And then he kicks it into gear. It was like he flipped a switch, which I thought was really cool to watch. And even the first stretch of three birdies, right? Seven, you should you should get. Eight, or eight you should get. Um, seven, you should get. So he, he does on those and then hits a great shot into nine. And, and that makes for a really nice round and then he adds uh the birdie at 10 again you should get so he takes advantage of that middle stretch that you should um but but kicking it into gear like that on what uh 14 15 16 is that's top 10 player material yeah stellar stellar stuff 14 under par for the event two off the lead of Wyndham Clark who we spoke at length about last night and if you thought Xander's 7-under-64 was good, let me show you an 8-under bogey-free 63 from the penultimate group looking for your first career PGA Tour victory. That is what Wyndham Clark did today. <laughs> yes, he did. And boy, I mean, does he pat? We'll use one of Patrick's lines. Does he pass the eye test? <laughs> I mean, this was as pretty around a golf as you could ever see. You put him in a group with Xander Shoffley and you have Adam Scott there in the mix too. And this is just beautiful golf swings on a beautiful golf course. It, it and, and Wyndham Clark really fits that mold. This golf swing is so good. And, and this was probably the best he's ever hit it. Probably the best I've ever seen him hit it. Uh, and, and that iron play that clicked, that went back and looked you know, his five best strokes gain approach uh, weeks on the PGA Tour are all this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and and right now, gaining 6.874 strokes of obviously leading the field. Uh, that would be his best ever. So he, it just continues to pile on. Of course, we don't know what he's going to do we tomorrow. We got to book this guy and say, what happened? It, that would be... I mean, that, that would be the interview. We we need a one-question interview. Just one What happened question. with your iron play? What happened in La Jolla? What, what happened? I was there. Probably stayed at the same hotel. Everybody stays at that same hotel. I could have been that guy. I could have found something and now gained six strokes on the approach on the PGA Tour. Yeah. By the I, way, I heard, uh, looking at that picture there, with the putter. Yeah. Um, that is, he was playing a practice round with Ricky Fowler and tried Ricky's putter and liked it and had one made. Okay. This is actually the first week that he used it. I, okay. Well, that makes me feel a lot better that I did not notice that outrageous grip previously. Yeah. And I'm glad he hasn't been using it for six months. And it's funny you say that because I was watching on the coverage and I saw Ricky's grip and I was like, oh, that's the same grip Wyndham yep. has. But really, Wyndham got it from Ricky. Yes. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a copy. And Ricky got it from his caddy. <laughs> right, right you know they're they're just like they're just like us rick you pick copy. something up you like it you yeah you, you get one uh it's so funny copycat league now uh look at these two Wyndham clark xander shawfley that is 15 birdies 
and an eagle. Two bogeys, both Xander. Pff, guy stinks. <laughs> 15 <laughs> under par. Uh, it was it, That was a very, very enjoyable just like back and forth birdie, birdie barrage. It, they just didn't really miss shots. I mean, Xander had a couple out of you know fairway bunkers and missed missed a few. Um, but when they put it in play, they it, it always seemed like it was the best shot we've seen today. Right. You know, oh well, that's one. Of, that's the best we've seen in the last hour. But that that was on. You could put that on repeat on the broadcast. You know, tricky hole locations doesn't matter. They executed the shots. They took advantage of the conditions, and they're in the final group and. You know, the, this kind of performance, in a way, it, it ruined my prediction of this leaderboard f- kind of flipping where yeah. the early guys made up a lot of ground. And the early guys held up their end of the bargain. The later guys didn't. They just way outperformed. This is just a stellar performance. And and I hope they do it again tomorrow. I love watching these two battle it out. I, I hope they can keep each other motivated and and press each other forward uh, instead of instead of hanging on well before we look at the at the odds board uh let me just zoom out on this leaderboard a little bit so we've got Wyndham clark at 16 under par xander at 14 then a three shot gap at 11 to adam scott and terrell hatton then you've got harris english tommy fleetwood sung jm at 10 um i imagine You know, I don't want to call it a match play situation. I don't want to call it a two horse race. But um, how realistic is it that someone not named Wyndham Clark and Zan or Xander Shoffley wins this golf tournament? I think it's uh, unlikely, but not as unlikely as I would like. Right? This should be very unlikely. Um, But it's only two guys, and you have some, you know. Pretty pretty good thoroughbreds behind him, uh, and and look, Wyndham Clark has n- has not been in this position very often, um, and so look, if if there if one of these two guys doesn't win the golf tournament, could you foresee a Wyndham Clark seventy three? Yeah, I, I don't think that would surprise a lot of people. I mean, after watching him play today, it would be surprising, but we know what a night's sleep can do to a golfer. Uh, and 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 now there's only one guy at at 14 under. And does Xander go shoot even par or something? I mean, that that could very easily happen. This is a hard golf course. Um, so I, I think there is a possibility, but uh, I, I'd like to think it's pretty unlikely. Well, the odds makers are basically saying uh, Wyndham Clark is even money here, plus 100. With Xander Shoffley at plus 165. The next shortest odds are Terrell Hatton's. 16 to one. He is five off the lead. Adam Scott, also five off the lead, is 25 to one. Sung JM at 30. So if you think there's a path to someone else, you can get a great value on it, but not sure how likely that might be. Yeah. You know, Sung J is kind of interesting to me. And, and I told you yesterday I liked Adam Scott a lot. Yeah, you did. Um, but here's the thing about Sung Jay. You look at his stats, you go strokes gained. He lost uh, nearly a shot uh, approaching the green today, but led the field in proximity to the hole. Um, so, you know, what happens is on 16, he hits it long left into the, into the water. And that really hurts the strokes gain category. But there's still some real juice there. I, I think he's swinging better than 52nd with his irons. Uh, right now so that has my interest and that's in the event that these two kind of fall off the wagon so those would be the only other two the only two guys that i would look to uh tyrell hatton maybe a few too many splashes in the sand today um i'm I'm not sure it's it's going to be his day tomorrow although he has played really well Uh, i would say the two guys i like are scott and maybe him well, I'll be playing the matchup market tomorrow. I think, I think that's <laughs> probably the, the the proper way to go about it. Because I don't think I'll be betting these two at plus 100 or 165. And then I don't think I'll be uh, taking a crack on anybody else behind. But could, could you call the real lead 14 under? <laughs> I mean, usually we reserve that for a guy who's never won before. 
which, yes. which, which is the case here. The problem is wyndham has been so good for four months. Right. And, and I love him. <laughs> I know me too. It, it's, it's great to see. I like, this is a stud who has been underperforming in my opinion for a long time. And, and now this is a stud who's performing. I mean, this is probably an optimal level for, for anybody, but, um, but, but this is more like the Wyndham Clark that I've expected to see over the past couple of years, given his skill set. 